Well, boys, it's still that time of year on the JP version of the game where they get the exact same Valentine's raid up banner that we got, except psych, since JP is two years ahead in the future, they actually have more servants on their banner. And I know there's actually quite a few people that are starting new accounts because they want to summon for Bazette. And this is obviously a very good time to jump into the game because you have so many different servants that are going on raid up. So not only could you try to snag Bazette, who's going to be very strong, especially if you have a new account because she'll be able to solo most of the content in the game or beat up a lot of content in the game um especially if you bring like a friend scotty and like your own waiver that you can get for free for finishing fuyuki you know you can do stuff like that and just go absolute ham taro on the game but there are other really strong servants in here they can go ahead and scoop so i'm just gonna like briefly summarize every servant here and whether or not i recommend summoning for them you know give you some pros and cons and then i'll kind of just let you decide if that's the direction you want to take your account in because if you start the game now you don't have any access to scotty you don't have access to Castoria, Koyanskaya, and Nero Bride just left. Like the best thing you can get as a new player is to finish Fuyuki, get the free five star, pick up a waiver, and then you can pretty much use whoever you want to use. So with you know a friend, Koyanskaya, Castoria, blah blah blah, you know whoever you want to bring. So it puts you in a unique position to where you can kind of just pick good servants, or you can just get generally just generic splashable servants not someone who's like hyper specific and really won't help you out in a lot of scenarios unless you're someone who's been playing for a couple months or maybe you started playing like last week you scooped yourself up a nero bride you might be more inclined to go for some um, some of the uh quick and art servants right because you can help them loop so before we begin, if you have not already, I upload videos every single day, so I'd greatly appreciate a like and subscribe on the video and the channel. Helps me out more than you know. If you want a free way to support the channel, and actually something that's pretty tasteful for this video, uh, I'm sponsored by LD Emulator. You know, I'm affiliated with them. Uh, you can actually just use them to actually make a JP account and play on your computer, which I think is super based. So you could do that actually right now and then take this information you get in this video and directly apply it. How cool is that? Um, also, if you want more content, I stream every weekday over on my Twitch. Although because school is starting, that's becoming a bit more inconsistent. I might change to just Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You gotta see how things go. But as it stands right now, I would still really like to stream every day. It's just, you know... I get kind of busy with exams and everything sometimes and I have like very early schedules and whatnot so things can get a little hard to juggle and I'm obviously going to be taking school over getting the additional stream uh, just you know because I got to be responsible it's just unfortunate <laughs> but if you want bonus content you can click that join button to become a channel member I'm actually recording the Valentine's Day challenge quest over uh on the na version of the game i'm recording that right now and that's going to go up for channel members and it'll have like commentary and everything and those have been pretty good so far so yeah i think with all that being said we can just go ahead and dive into this video <clears throat> i think i'm actually gonna go in reverse order so nightingale nightingale is not bad she's one of those servants that has like a very solid foundation like she could be really good in the future if they maybe made some of her buffs like more targetable um i would actually like to go in more <laughs> depth and talk about a lot of these servants but then we'll be here for like an hour and i want this to be a bit more palatable for people just easier to consume so basically nightingale if you summon for her her NP is very strong as it neuters the enemy party. She can give you a targetable uh, Buster Mana Burst, which is very strong. She has like this humanoid offensive and defense uh, defensive buffer herself. If they make that targetable, she'll be absolutely nuts. So you could summon for Nightingale because you think she's cute or you want a big booby nurse. That's fine. Just know she's probably not the best servant to own right now because she's still lacking some critical buffs, right? I think if they just make her second uh skill the uh humanoid buff targetable i think she's absolutely insane galatea galatea is essentially your female version of vlad you can go back and forth as to who you think is better between vlad and galatea i think it's a very close debate um with vlad ironically being a bit more crit star oriented with how his np works and galatea being more of a control oriented servant with how her np works but they're both absolutely phenomenal servants um if you don't have Vlad or you just need a really good art single target servant that you could pretty much bring to any quest because she's a berserker, she's definitely a very strong option to go with with really strong defensive abilities as well with her giving herself the uh, like the 100% damage cut for uh, two hits, the guts, the ability to heal and debuff clients at the end of the turn. All of that is very, very strong. <clears throat> John is very similar to Nightingale in that she's 
like a bit further along than Nightingale is to being like what I would consider to be a complete servant, but she's probably like one buff off. So if you don't know, Jean has the ability with like this insanely giga strong NP where she's giving you like a heal, she's giving you invincibility. I believe she also has a debuff cleanse on there. Just absolutely insane. And then she can also just neuter one enemy's defense so your entire party can just slam them into the ground for lots of damage. I think what she's really missing is maybe like a charisma buff because you know she's john she led soldiers in the battle i think would be really super dope if they had to have like a charisma that was like 20 percent uh attack and like 20 percent np damage for like the entire party for three turns i think that would be like giga based if they did that for john i think she's just missing something like that to kind of complete her package as like a defensive uh, but also offensive support type servant so she's a little off you could summon for her she's a little further along but definitely like out of the ones we've discussed so far galatea is one of the better ones to go for jack is kind of interesting because jack is super basic but she's super good because like her quick cards are absolutely insane she can drop a gafoogle amount of stars she can refund her np with quick crits um she has the anti-female uh, damage mod that is lower. It's at like 50%. Uh, but the reason it's at 50% is because it lasts the entire turn. That's still not a good trade-off. Uh, you'd probably still rather have the 150% to 200% damage mod because you're probably just going to blast them with the NP anyway. And Jack's following cards don't do that much damage. But that's kind of the point of her having the anti-female mod. You know, is that like her face cards following an NP can do some damage. So at that point it's kind of just up to your personal preference but personally i just don't like how that's built i'd rather her just have the insanely op 150 percent to 200 percent but you know she's still very good for just bursting down female enemies and because she's an assassin i mean you can bring her to fight zerks and riders but she's also very good type neutral like if you want to bring her to fight like some saber boss she's very good for that with things like pierce defense on her np she's definitely very very solid uh, she's a servant that you know you could kind of go for or not depending on what you think you're going to run into with your box maybe you already have jack maybe you got her like lucky because remember all these servants are on like every banner they're you know not like restricted or anything so uh, then we have Osaka Behime. Osaka Behime is a pretty solid one to go for. She's probably out of the ones on the list. She's probably one of the better ones you could probably get because she's a really good solo servant, although she's admittedly very slow at doing the soloing. She's still very good at it, and she functions as a quick and buster support type servant, so she's just very good. She's kind of like Waver, just a little more specific. Like Once you get Waver as a new player, you can pretty much do whatever you want, so you could do like Waver plus any quick... Uh, buster servant then osaka behemoth if you have her and then you have a very like defensive and also pretty strong team at that it's not going to be as strong as like double koyan sky or anything but you'll definitely have enough power to get the job done drake is pretty much like the staple buster rider right now because if you have a 50 percent battery like the natural 50 percent battery you are just primed god tier in Koyan Sky is Buster Meta. I mean, Drake does other good things. Like she has like the Pierce Invincibility, the NP Gain skill. She has her own Buster buff now. She has all of that stuff, but really doesn't matter because she has the 50% battery and that's all Koyan Sky cares about because Koyan Sky herself will give you the Buster buff. She'll give you the special damage mod, all that other stuff. As long as you got that 50% battery, Koyan Sky is absolutely in love with you. So if you're planning on going for Koyan Sky, although she just had like right up so who knows the next time she's gonna come back but if you're planning on that drake's a very good investment it just keep in mind i have no idea when she'd be coming back artoria is very strong because she just slams people with a big beefy np and her second skill actually got buffed to turn all of her cards into buster cards for the turn so she literally just choke slams people that's all she does she is just there to do big damage unfortunately she doesn't have the natty 50 percent battery you have to get it with the uh the append skill but still like that's still usable it's just not quite as good because you have to do some shenanigans 30 percent is fine you can still use her but again you know not as good as having like the natty you know what i'm saying um then you have anastasia anastasia is pretty solid i would probably like put her in like kind of one of the mid tier for recommendations for servants to summon for because she's not bad it's just you're gonna really need castoria with her because you can technically loop with anastasia but it's kind of hard to do without castoria you could use some shenanigans like you could bring in like paracelsus you have asclepius you have the tools to get it done with people like that it's just a bit wonkier right it's just a little weird because her uh her np hits are a little lower i think they're at like three if i recall correctly so 
yeah she's definitely not a bad servant though like she does have like the natty 50 percent battery she's got like pierce invincibility and stuff she's definitely got good utility going for her she has like the negative charisma right which i really do like so i think that's pretty sick so definitely a solid servant but not one i'd probably headhunt for uh sanzo is 50 50 i mean as far as like value for a newer player she's probably quite high because Sanzo herself is pretty self-sufficient. I mean, she has her own like 80% battery plus NP damage. She functions as a taunting servant, has a charisma. And then her third skill is just an insane party-wide buff, giving you like uh, NP gain and the debuff immunity. That stuff is just absolutely crazy. I can see you making the argument for wanting to go for this servant because not only is Sanzo pretty smoking hot, dude, but like <laughs> she's also really self-sufficient. She doesn't really need a whole lot of help she likes support but she doesn't really need it to be self-sufficient if that kind of makes sense so Sansa is definitely a very solid choice to go for mordred's kind of like a more niche artoria because she has the arthur special damage mod and she's kind of like leaning more to doing buster crits specifically because of how they tailored her skills so if you're gonna like it's kind of up to preference if you want mordred or artoria i would just lean more artoria because generally she's just gonna hit harder and do more damage but if you have a preference for Mordred, where you just really like the Apocrypha outfit, you're not like losing a whole lot like for going for Mordred. I would recommend going for Artoria if you're going for a Buster AoE Saber, but again, like you're not really losing a whole lot. Altera is just very unfortunate because unless you have like a maximum broken K scope, she's kind of suffering a little bit. Um, She does some damage, but now not as much damage as Artoria, which is like her main claim to fame. So yeah, I would avoid Altera like, Altera like the plague. Uh, Tamamo is definitely interesting to go for. Because if you have Waver plus Tamamo, you can do basically any art setup you want. And Tamamo plus Castoria is also a very solid uh, boss killing setup. So she's definitely one that I would highly consider going for. Um, but you do need to know that you're going to need art servants because that's kind of the direction you'd be taking your account in. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Vitra is a servant that I personally own and am very disappointed with. It seems like Vitra just always slightly underperforms for me. It's like she'll be missing 3% NP or something, or she'll just do like just barely not enough damage. Like she'll miss the kill by like 2000 HP. And I'm like, Vitra, what are you doing? Like, and it's like, a, it's a consistent failure. You know what I'm saying? And so it's, she's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just, she's built really wonky. I think a lot of that comes from her third skill. Her third skill gives her NP refund and a one-time NP damage buff. So you're kind of stuck between like, okay, do I pop this to make her consistently loop or do I pop this on wave three so I can consistently kill the end boss? It just leaves you in a very odd position. I'm sure if you have higher NP copies of Vitra, it is not a problem, but I'm assuming if you're summoning for her, you're probably going to get a one and done. She's not bad. It's just, I, I just don't advise opening that can of worms. <laughs> that is frustration that I don't like having to deal with. Bradamante is, she's cute. And that's kind of all she's got going for her. Look, I understand she's a cutie patootie. She's hot. She has a banging NP, right? All that good stuff, but she's still not very good. She's going to definitely need like a buff or two. She's fun to play with. I'll give her that. She's a very fun servant to use, but she needs like, I don't know, like an NP gain buff or something, or like an extra battery. So she needs something to kind of help her out just a little bit. Janako is definitely interesting to use as like a solo slash support type servant. She generally goes under the radar, but she has really good skills. Like I really like her charisma that gives you the attack buff and uh, it gives you the refundable stars of return. Like I think she's definitely slept on a little bit. Um, it's just people don't like having to use her third skill because they're like, oh my gosh, someone's going to get stunned. It's like, bro, you have debuff immunity. Calm down. Like, you're a grown man. Use the debuff cleanse. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is one that you could take or leave. If you're a fan of Janako, go ahead for it. If you're not really a fan for Janako, you can kind of skip. But she's definitely an interesting pick to go for. Um, probably not something you want for like a newer account because you're not going to get the most use out of a moon cancer. But, you know, that is there. Uh, Dio Scurry, this is definitely one of the ones that I highly praise a lot because they're absolutely insane. Their first skill is pretty much the only thing they need because their first skill turns their quick and arts cards all into the same color. Like they just merge all of their quick and arts cards together because it makes their quick cards guaranteed uh, gen 10% NP and it makes their art cards guaranteed drop 10 stars, right? So like arts and quicks change with them are just 
ludicrous. They're just insane, right? So like th this is a servant that I could highly recommend to people. If you're needing a DPS servant, I would highly recommend them. It's just the only problem is that like, as much as like, I think they're way better than Galatea, right? The problem though, is that Galatea is a berserker. And for a newer person who's probably looking at this banner, because if you're a veteran player, you're probably not summoning on the Valentine's better. You're probably summoning, you're, like you're saving for the newer servants, right? Um, but if you're a newer player, having a berserker that's a single target that has good defense and you know has a solid battery and everything that's probably more valuable to you than just a really good boss killing dps servant right like it's probably better for you to go for galatea because she's a zerk and more generally applicable so keep that in mind but maybe you already got lucky and you already have like a really strong zerk maybe you are starting off with heracles or i don't know maybe you got ku ultra on some lucky story ticket that you threw over there right and you're like i don't really need the single target berserker then i guess you could go for dio scurry um Europa over here is just what I would call a solid, just good A tier rider. Like she's just got everything. She's got the buster buff that adds up to 50% when you fire the NP. Her NP makes her tanky. She has three hits of invincibility that aren't turn based. I mean, 30% battery. She's just a solid servant overall. I don't recommend going for her, but if you wanted to, because for some reason you're like, Europa is really cute. She's got a giant mech in her NP. I don't know. For some reason you want to go for her. She's not a bad option. Like she'll definitely put in work for you because she's just built like a very solid character. Shahrazad, she exists, you know, <laughs> that may be a little mean of me. Maybe that's my personal bias coming through. But uh, if you guys don't know, I was doing summons for Scotty when she first came out, got spooked by Shahrazad and that was on my last multi. So that was not very fun. So I hold kind of a grudge against Shahrazad. She's not bad. Okay. She's packing skills that do things, right? But in all reality, you don't really need to summon for Shahrazad. Like she, she's kind of like if you, the debate is like Shahrazad or Anastasia, right? Because they're both AOE arts casters. I'm gonna recommend people to go for Anastasia every day of the week, partly because of my bias, but also because Anastasia has a 50% battery, pierced invincibility, solid charisma, all that good stuff. And Shahrazad is built more for like. She has like more defensive oriented skills, which maybe you value that more and maybe you go for Shahrazad, right? But she sucks. I hate Shahrazad. Anyway, <laughs> all right, enough of my personal, <laughs> enough of that. I still hold a grudge after a few years. In all reality, she's not like terrible or anything. It's just, I re honestly would tell you to go for Anastasia just because I think she's a bit more valuable for your box. Um, Orion exists. You know, Artemis is definitely a servant that if Uriel didn't exist and that you could get for free, maybe Artemis would have a bit more utility. But unfortunately, there is a free three-star version called Uriel, who is pretty much Orion, but arguably better, right? Um, I'm not gonna open that can of worms just yet, but I will say that it is, it's very arguable that Uriel is better. Your boy is in team camp Uriel, so you know, just that's my personal preference on that. But yeah, there's really no reason to summon for Artemis. Mave is insane. If you have any males or fey people in your box, Mave is going to go crazy. Even if you don't, she's an insane anti-male servant that actually <clears throat> does other things uh, other than just has one turn of big boy damage. Mave is stupid dummy insane, right? Like she's so good with the charisma, the ability to refund her NP, to charge the party's NP, to double buff them with charisma like she just got insane stuff out the wazoo she's just so stupid um lancer artorium is basically the same thing as drake but for lancers right like she's the 50 percent battery girl she's got the pierce invincibility got the buster buff and she's got special damage mods now she's definitely really really solid the problem is that arresh gal now also got really good so like if you summon for lancer artoria and then you also want to summon for a Reshkigal, probably not a good idea because you'll probably end up using a Reshkigal more times than uh, Lancer or Tori because a Reshkigal just got insanely stupid good when they gave her her buff. Like she's absolutely insane with how good they made her. But Lancer or Tori is like not far behind like because she has good things for herself as well. Like the debuff cleanse, 50% battery, special damage mods, plus pierce invincibility. All this stuff is very, very solid. It makes her just a very good just solid aoe lancer like you could still get use out of lance artory she's not completely irrelevant um quetzalcoatl i think is one buff off from being like an s tier servant i think right now she's like an a to a plus uh graded servant just because she's built very well for a year one servant 
she's pretty much got it all down. Like, I think they just buff her NP and just give it a little bit more, and she's just raring to go to the races because she's got a strong charisma that drops a pretty decent amount of stars. She's got a, you know, crit star buff. She's got crit damage, a battery, a targetable guts that comes with a buster buff. I mean, she's just kind of got everything for success. Only complaints I have really is that the NP doesn't do a whole lot and her third skill, the crit buff only lasts for one turn. But outside of that, I mean, there's not a whole lot else to her. It's like even the star weight lasting for one turn isn't really a big deal because she's a rider and her natural star weight is so high. So it's like, Ketz is like one buff off being absolutely dummy insanely good i mean she's already stupid good it's just she's like one to two more buffs away from being like an s tier servant like she's very very good right now um, if you need a strong single target rider i you could definitely summon for cats it's very justifiable and then sits and i um because she's an alter ego and you have a newer account she's definitely going to help you out a lot because sits and i will fill a lot of roles that say like cats or um like jack would fill right because well actually no am i, am I gonna get backwards no, 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 I got it. Yeah, never mind. I was like, am I, am I going to get backwards? Am I thinking of Oberon? I was like, who am I thinking of? I was like, no, no, no. Because as an alter ego, she's super effective against riders, casters, zerks, and assassins, right? She's super effective against all of those different classes, right? And that's her primary purpose. So you can get a lot of use out of her because she essentially becomes someone you can just bring to any of those boss fights and she'll hold it down. Like people, again, like I always say, they either gas up Satanai way too much or they think she's complete dog water which i don't think she's either like i think she's like a solid like b plus servant right like b plus a minus like she's definitely not this s tier goddess that carries you through everything in the game and there's no one that's gonna come close to her but she's also not complete dookie dog water that does two damage and doesn't do anything right like both camps are way too split on it i have no idea why she's this controversial of a servant i mean it's literally just Ilya being smug i don't know i don't know why this is causing problems but sit is a fine servant and honestly as a newer player if you're not going to go for someone like galatea who is probably the one i would recommend out of the art servants and probably going to be one of the higher value servants you can get because as a single target zerk that's you know very modern has a lot of pieces of equipment she'll carry you through a lot of stuff she could put in a lot of work especially when you give her someone like waiver that you're going to be getting for free but Sitanai is not much further down behind her because uh, Sitanai is also a very, very solid servant. And if you don't want Galatea and you like, you're like, oh man, I just want Smug Ilya, you're not losing out on a whole lot to go for uh, Sitanai. I think Galatea is better, but I don't think you're losing out like, it's not like five tiers above, right? It's not like you're losing out on so much that you're a complete dumb, dumb, stupid head for summoning for Sitanai instead. Like, I think it's absolutely fine if you want to go for her. But that's kind of my breakdown for all those servants in a brief way. I you guys know me i like to go in depth and i like to just ramble on and like kind of just keep talking and talking and talking about like the things that i like and don't like about the servants but we save those for the tier list we save those for like the top fives and everything right well not the top fives because the top fives are also supposed to be concise but we save this for the tier list all right how about that we just save them for that all right so yeah that's my recommendations i hope that's able to help you guys out if you need further help or you need more advice on who you want to summon for um the discord is always open in the description down below uh, we have an fgo chat so if i'm not personally available which i'm half the time am and half the time not because sometimes i'm in the discord but i'm busy doing other things and then sometimes i'm just taking a nap or like doing homework so you know like sometimes i'm not available we have other people in the discord that are also very competent they can definitely help you out um avoid the yellow names though the yellow names are the scourge and the bane of my existence but no no offense to the yellow names out there i'm sure, I'm sure i'm gonna get a lot of messages now people be like well, i can't believe you said that okay look love all of you guys all right but you gotta understand gotta know but <laughs> all right before before i make people upset let me go ahead and get out of here <laughs> let me go ahead and get out of here but you guys have yourselves a nice day uh peace lane guys